version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. Now, this week we saw an exciting week, to say the least, in the equity markets. Uh, we had the report of Ebola. In the middle of the week, we saw the markets take a tumble, and then it came back today with the jobs report. But uh, an Ebola virus scared a lot of market participants. Should we... Could we expect to see some spillover into the commodities? Well, I think that that uh, as you said, the, the 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 that virus is scaring everybody. The the but we're getting a lot of reassurances that we shouldn't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. But it just takes a few more cases and some evidence of of transmission uh, amongst people in this country, and you can change a lot of people's attitude about being out in public. Uh, you could uh, uh, hurt the restaurant trade. Uh, you could hurt a lot of of of, uh, of the business that counts, that, where people get together in order to in order to eat. And we, you know, we people uh, uh, can get frightened very easily. We just have to wait and see. But uh, w although we don't have too many worries in the meat business from a standpoint of the marketplace, those kind of things coming in from left field, so to speak, could really put a damper on things. So as uh, uh, livestock producers need to pay attention to that and understand that uh, if that were to become a major issue, it will have a negative impact on the demand for their product. One more incentive to protect these record prices up in this neck of the woods. It, it, it certainly is an incentive. Now, maybe it's unnecessary, mm -hmm. uh, in which case it, it, you may want to look at a put option to do that. But uh, I'm willing to sell cattle just straight out on futures because I think that the, the market's at a high enough price levels to do that. Um, uh, we'd have a little patience on hogs, however. And speaking of that, you mentioned on hogs on the show that, uh, that we're not killing enough hogs. Where are we at on the slaughter today? Well, the statistics since Labor Day uh, uh, look to be about 6% fewer hogs than we should have been um, uh, running through the slaughterhouse uh, uh, since Labor Day. So uh, the, uh, compare that back to the spring hog pigs report. And so uh, uh, w w the, are the numbers being held back in the breeding herd at a faster clip than what the last report said, or, or are those numbers not there? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, our tendency is to think that, that we'll continue to run some smaller slaughter numbers, and so that's part of the reason we're positive in the hog business. And uh, the pork cutout has continued to be fairly strong. We're seeing cash demand justify these numbers where they're at today mm -hmm. and potentially potentially even higher yeah I think that uh, uh, if the if the numbers uh, slack off then prices will come higher okay well now we do have a couple of questions um, uh, we, we've had some folks you mentioned the dollar as we were talking at the start of the show we've got Calvin in East Central Iowa who's curious big picture uh, with the dollar continuing to strengthen, should we expect grains to keep declining going forward? Will the dollar be the reason grains keep declining, or is the market going to balance that and a large harvest? I really think what uh, the, the market has adjusted to the very strong dollar. I mean, that's part of the reason that we're punishing the grain markets and, and, and all the other commodities right now. Now, can the dollar continue to skyrocket? Well, I suppose it, it can. Um, uh, I don't know that I would anticipate that. We've already had a very substantial move. We've already made a lot of adjustments uh, for the uh, for the fundamental differences, and so we're, we're probably not too far away from where that market uh, finds somewhat of a top. But at the moment, that the fear of that occurring has already had an impact in all the commodities and certainly in the grain market. Okay. All right. So it, again, fear taken hold. And it, but it's already there. Right. This is, this is not something that happened just this week. This, is, this has been coming on now for the last several weeks and is a part of the selling that uh, this happened to the, up to this point. Okay. All right. So now, now we, there's the potential to see the opposite of that. If the market does find a top, we can remove some of that fear from the market. The, 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 the selling, because of the dollar strength, is, is more of a speculative kind of a play. If you look at the, and see who it is that we sell our grains to, there's really not that much reduced demand that's going to happen because of the strength in the dollar. Uh, the Chinese uh, is our biggest soybean buyer, and that, the, the strength of the dollar is not that big of an impact for them. In fact, is it might help their economy because we'll purchase more Chinese goods because of, our, of a bit stronger dollar. Uh, the Japanese are uh, their biggest buyer overall, and, and uh, the currency relationship doesn't have that much to do with it. Okay. Uh, so we don't think that that's going to really impact what our total business is or very much of our business uh, in the grain market, but it does move speculative money. 
Okay. And that's what we, that's what's been happening. And now you raised an issue that uh, that Jeff from Twitter has brought up. He's curious, what does usage for grains look like in the next six months? Well, the forecast we, uh, that we've had from the from the USDA uh, calls for higher usage numbers than what we had last year, but not by much. Uh, we think the usage numbers will increase as time goes along, as they did last year. Uh, these uh, kind of prices, uh, uh, the, the best cure for cheap prices are cheap prices because you really create increased levels of demand. Okay. And I know in the past you've said we can expect historically a 2% increase in uh, corn usage. And this year, I believe you would mentioned maybe 4% might be the number we were looking at. 2 to 4 is the normal annual growth rate. Okay. Uh, and we would think it would be toward the upper side of that range and the government's toward underneath the lower side. Okay. Now, John, before we let you go, we've got a question here from another John in Stephen, Minnesota. He's curious, what commodity has the best chance for a major rally this winter? And why? What, what fundamentals out there speak to any commodity to have a rally this winter? Well, we're already having a big rally in coffee. Uh, you know, so there's, there's a, a market that's already underway because of dry conditions and, and drought in, in Brazil. Um, I think it's the corn market. I think that, that we'll create a very large demand base under corn, and we'll find that we're not going to get increased corn numbers out of South America, and we're going to struggle to get increased corn numbers in the United States this next spring. So I think between now, and I'm not sure winter, but between now and spring, I think it's corn. All right. Well, that's a fairly optimistic note for a lot of our viewers, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for taking the time to be with us, John. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for sending in your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will continue to get expert analysis right to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.